Welcome back to Know Your Nodes. This is a series of Godot game engine videos where we take a single node type from the engine and show how it's used. Maybe it's a node that you've never come across before, or maybe it's one you were just wondering what the best way to use it is. But hopefully after this, you'll have a new tool that you can use in making your own games. This time, we'll be talking about the Path Follow 2D node. So our focus is going to be on this Path Follow 2D node, but we do need to know about a couple of other nodes in order to make it work. Because as you can see from the description, the very brief description, point sampler for a path 2D. So down here at the longer description, you see that the, the path follow 2D needs to have a path 2D parent that's going to define what path it's going to follow. And if we click on path 2D, a path 2D node is a very, very simple node. All it does is contain a curve 2D. And what's a curve 2D? Well, a curve 2D is a Bezier curve in 2D space. And you may not, may or may not be familiar with the term Bezier curve, but really it's just a way of defining a two-dimensional path in space. And you can do it in a lot of different ways, but there's a really easy way to do it in the editor. And that's what we're going to do. So if we go over here, I've got an empty scene, and I'm just going to add a path 2D as the root. Okay. And when you do that, when you add a path 2D, you will see you get some new editor buttons up here. These are going to help you edit your path. So see this one right here that has the little green plus on it? This lets you add points in space. So if you click on points in empty space, you will add points. And if I do that right now, you'll see everywhere I click, it's creating another point, and it is connecting them. So now I have a path going from here to here. And you can delete points, right? If I didn't want this one in between there, I could delete that. If you want to grab this button right here, you can adjust where they are so you can move them around. You can insert ones in between and so on. And then the other thing you can do is with this button right here, this lets you do the control points. And the control points are how you control how curvy the path is. So if I grab one of these, no, one of the points, you can see I pull this control node out, I can change how it curves between the two points, right? And you can have these coming out of each of the points in whatever method you choose, and you can basically sculpt your path this way and have it go curve around the way you want it to curve around, right? and until you have the path the way you want it. And, you know, it can be time consuming to, to set these up and get them perfectly the way you want them. So I've gone ahead and created a path right here that's a loop, basically a figure eight. It starts up here in the upper left-hand corner, and it just loops around in a figure eight pattern back to the end. Now we have our path we want to follow. We can add our path follow node. So we're going to add a node path follow 2D, right? And we want that to be a child of the path. And I'm just going to name this follow. And so, you know, the path 2D doesn't have really any properties to, to worry about. It just has, it just holds this curve. But the path follow does have a lot of properties that we're going to experiment around with. Um, and the main one is this offset. Offset is how you control where along the curve you want to move. And so now we need something to move. If we look back over at our documentation for the path follow, it says it's useful for making other nodes follow a path. For that, the nodes must be descendants of this node. When setting the offset, the descendants will move accordingly. So we need to put something underneath this path follow that is going to be the thing that will follow the path. And so for that, we're going to add a sprite. So I'm going to grab a sprite real quick, and I'm going to use this little spaceship texture, throw that in there. And just real quickly, I'm going to scale it down a little bit because it's kind of large. And OK. Now, if we look back at our path follow properties, one of the options here is rotate on or off. 
and that controls, if I set, uh, set the re rotation back to zero, that controls whether the node, as it follows the path, will rotate to follow the path, right? Do you want, to remain, want it to remain always facing the same direction, or do you want it to look like it is, you know, a car driving along the path and it rotates to follow? So we're going to put that on. And then, oh, by the way, since our sprite started out pointing sideways, I do need to rotate this. Uh, minus 90 degrees. That's just because of the default sprite orientation. It's drawn pointing up, but zero degrees is pointing to the right in our 2D space. All right. So we're on our path follow. We're going to rotate. I want the spaceship to look like it's following the path. And loop whether you want to, when you reach the end, loop back to the beginning or not. Is this a one-way path, you know, with a start and an end, or is it a loop? Well, ours is a loop, so I'm going to turn that on. And now this offset. So this offset is going to control however long your path is, you can go along the offset. So for example, if I put 100, I'm going to be 100 units along the path, right? I could go 1,000. It's way over here. And you see how the sprite is rotating to match the direction of the path. So you can use the offset to set this. You can also use the unit offset. The unit offset just maps the length of the path to a difference between 0 and 1, right? So 0 0.5 would be halfway along the path, wherever that is, right? And so you can use either of those depending on how you want to um, measure your distance. So now let's look at how we might do this in code. So I've added a brief script here. It just takes our follow node, and in the process function, I set the offset to whatever the current offset is plus some number times delta. And that's all you need to do. Now our spaceship is going to fly along the path. And remember, because we set it to loop, then when the loop, when the offset reaches the maximum, it gets set right back to zero again and goes through again. So so our ship will just continue to fly around the path as it goes. It's a really simple example of how to use the Path Follow 2D. Uh, one more thing that I'll do that I thought was a little fun was I've gone back into the script now and I've changed it a little bit. And we're not going to use the set offset anymore to steadily change it. Instead, we're going to use a tween. So I've added a new tween. And I'm going to set the tween to interpolate the property on the follow node called unit offset. And I want that to go from 0 to 1, which of course goes from the start to the end. I want it to take 6 seconds, and I'm going to use linear, which is going to look like what we did before, right? It's going to go at a steady speed. And I'm going to set repeat to true so that the tween will keep going over and over again. And that's going to look similar to what we had before. And again, we're going to take exactly 6 seconds to get all the way around the loop. But what le this lets you do is do things like using a different tween function, like for example, sign, is going to make it so that the, the ship will accelerate out of its start area and be going faster around the track, and then slow back down again at the end if you have a, a start point you want it to go from. And you can get a lot of really interesting effects by changing around which tween function you use and, and how you set it up. All right, I hope this was helpful. If you've never used the Path 2D or the Path Follow 2D nodes before, maybe you can see some applications of how to use them in your projects. Maybe you're making a tower defense game. This would be a great way to have your mobs come in and follow a certain path through the environment. Uh, you can control that path programmatically as well. You don't have to draw the path uh, using the editor. There's ways to do it with, um, with code as well. And it gives you a lot of flexibility of how you can control how things move through the environment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.